Welcome to my kitchen garden. My name is Sarah and I just picked some lovely melons for dinner tonight. I am a Swedish journalist writing a garden blog about how I grow vegetables for my family all year round in south of Sweden. Uh, I write the blog in Swedish and I produce uh, videos for YouTube in Swedish as well. But this one I will do in English since I guess that some of you watching this will be from other countries not understanding Swedish. So most welcome you who have not seen anything from my garden before. It's a pleasure to have you here. And the reason I do this video is because I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Monty Don himself, the gardener, famous gardener from England. And uh, he visited last weekend Sweden at the event, uh, the Grand Garden uh, Festival at Sofia Ro, a couple of hours from here. And I had an interview actually, and I was so happy <laughs> when I got the message that, uh, yes, you can, you can have a few minutes with him. So I wanted to talk to Mr. Montedon about something that I think is quite important, and it is to use the garden all year round as much as possible. And this is what I do in my garden, I winter garden. So now standing in my polytunnel, it's actually more like a greenhouse, but it is, <laughs> the construction is called a polytunnel. Uh, and this is where I grow pretty much of all the green leaves that we eat winter time, me and my family. So this is now in late August, uh, a transformation from the summer, uh, vegetables, crops, fruits, whatever, to the winter vegetables. The green leaves are just uh, coming out now from the ground, the sowings that I made a couple of weeks ago and it's just lovely to see this, um, to see this area transforming to another type of garden. And especially now in August, September, I see many gardeners in Sweden they just quit gardening <laughs> for a couple of months because they think this is the end of the season. I don't think it's the end of something. I think this is the beginning of something new. And that makes it a whole lot easier for me to be a gardener. It makes me a lot more happier to think that this is the beginning of something else. So I now start my winter season by sowing, by planting things that I could harvest later on. And this is what I wanted to talk to Monte Don about, maybe to get some advice from him, from his own garden. And first of all, I wanted to know about his feelings for this season. Is he feeling sad or happy about summer is going to an end? I, I feel slightly sad because summer is going over and, and I like summer. I like the long days and, and, and heat and, and it always does feel a bit sad. But in terms of growing vegetables, I try and certainly keep them going all the year round. And so we start planning our winter vegetables from about the end or middle of July. In fact, in fact, we start planning it a year ahead. We start from, from, from May because we start to sow things like broccoli. We will sow in early May for harvest following April and May. But we certainly are planning hard for winter now. And when, when you say hard, what well, does it we mean? Are, we are really thinking, right, what do we need to sow? What are we pricking out? So we've got, um, we try and, I always say, we want to be able to have a salad 365 days of the year. We want to have root vegetables, we want to have greens, so in winter that's mainly brassica, but we also have chard, we have spinach, um, we will have turnips and swedes and beetroot, uh, we'll have Japanese onions, so they will go through, um, and we, we can still sow now, what are we now, we're at the end of August, we can probably get one more sowing in. Only one more? Yes. Only one more now, um, because if we sow now, the seeds will germinate and grow on and be ready to prick out and be small plants by about the beginning of October, and then they will very quickly stop growing. They will, the, the light levels get to the point at which, however healthy the plants are, they just simply stop growing. When, when is that in Britain? In Britain, it's round about the middle of October. 
right. Because don't forget, our day, I mean, I'm sure it's the same, by the end of October, our clocks change and it's dark by five o'clock and it isn't light till late in the morning and the light levels get so low, even if it's daylight, it's very dark. The darkest two months for us are November and December. So uh, really nothing much grows at all by the time you get to the end of October. So November and December just dead still. And then starting again in January? Yes. All right. Um, because in Sweden, I would say it's like in the middle of November, things are a bit too dark. Yeah. So things grow pretty much uh, until the middle of November, then stop and then start to grow again in the middle of February. Well, we find that particularly with, sal with seedlings, they really slow right down and any growth is, is imperceptible. Um, I mean, obviously some plants like say chicories, all the different chicories, uh, their growth pattern is, you know, they have a lot of growth in summer, get a decent root, and then in winter they go on steadily growing and they will grow back all winter. Um, and some of the cabbage crops will grow all winter. But by and large, we try and time our seed sowing. So we have young plants uh, in October and then they will start to grow again January, February. And, but, the same, but we have other bigger plants that we're harvesting from September, October, November, December. And we just try and so there's always an overlap. So we always have two or three generations of plants. And it's a timing that is the critical thing. I do the same and I think it's very exciting to, to follow the plants through the sort of the dark period. Uh, and also it's exciting to see how much you can actually harvest throughout the winter and providing a family with all the greens you can need uh, together with things you can store like carrots and, and parsnips and, and the rest yeah. of it. I mean, we, we tend not to store roots out of the ground. We tend to leave them in the ground. So we leave carrots and parsnips and beetroot and turnips and swedes in the ground. Um, if it's very cold and the whole ground freezes solid, I mean, before now I've dug parsnips with a pickaxe uh, and celeriac we might harvest because that will go rotten if it gets too cold. But um, by and large, we store potatoes uh, and obviously our summer crops we store, but winter harvest we leave in the ground. Uh, and yes, you're right, the range you can have in winter is surprising. You can really have quite a variety. The worst period by far is, well, there are two bad periods. One sort of, if the weather is very bad, round about Christmas time, it, it can be a bit tricky. And again, it can get very thin at the end of winter, early spring. Is that what you call the hungry gap? Well, the hungry gap is actually a bit later. The hungry gap is actually more like April, May, when all the winter crops are finished and the summer crops haven't yet started. So the hungry gap technically is April and May um, because at the end of March, you still have, you still got the late winter crops. Um, and, and what's odd about the Hungry Gap is actually the weather is getting better. There are lots of things growing. There's just nothing left there to harvest. That's the problem. So if, if you go out asking any British gardener or a housekeeper with a garden, do they grow things winter time in general? Well, not enough people grow things at all. So. Um, the, the general answer has to be no, they don't grow things in winter time. But I think there are a lot of good allotment holders and a good vegetable gardeners who, yes. I mean, British gardeners tend to be quite good at growing that sort of thing. So they will grow, they grow a lot of cabbages, broccoli, cauliflowers, uh, Brussels sprouts. Um, they will grow root crops of all kinds. But if they have a polytunnel or a greenhouse, they may well grow some salad crops too. Yeah. I think in Sweden it's um, it's not a problem but but by tradition we have not grown uh, vegetables winter time because uh, we have had quite hard winter. Yeah. I mean when I grew up in in 1987 I was about uh, 8 years uh, we had like an ice winter. I'm actually grown up on an island outside Gothenburg so we could drive over the sea by car to to the city and we often spoke about this speaking about this but nowadays the winter is not really a winter, so it changed? Well, climate has changed. Um, I'm a lot older than you, and I can remember um, the winter of 1963, for example, 
when I couldn't go to school for four weeks because the roads were completely blocked with snow. Um, so winters, the last hard winter we had was 2010, 2011, when it got down to minus 20 in my garden, which was quite cold, and, and that was very difficult. But there's no question that climate is changing, and we have to adapt as gardeners. So our winters are getting milder, but they're getting wetter, and that's a separate problem. Um, there are more fungi and pests and diseases because we haven't got the cold weather to kill them off. So what we find is, is wet ground, you can't work at all. So you have to get everything into the ground by about October if you can, and then sometimes just lay off it until March or April even. Um, there's always a temptation in March to want to get going, and usually the ground is too cold. So our, our springs are getting colder, but, but wetter. Our summers are cooler, our winters are warmer, our autumns are warmer. The seasons are changing, no question about it. What, what would you give as an advice for us uh, gardeners in Sweden who would like to grow vegetables winter time when it is cold and dark? Do you have any advice? Well, I think grow lots of vegetables in summer and store them. St learn to really take trouble in freezing and bottling and drying. So store them. Um, and I think don't fight the conditions. You know, by all means have a tunnel or a, or a greenhouse uh, and that gives a lot of protection. But if you grow plants that are hardy, that will adapt, don't try and fight nature. You know, you can grow vegetables in winter, but choose carefully. Well, I think it was very inspiring to hear Monty Don talk both to me and to the audience at the Grand Garden Festival. And I share the same experience as Monty Don when it comes to gardening wintertime and growing vegetables when it's both cold and dark. And I can tell you it's colder and it's darker in Sweden uh, compared to England wintertime. So I have to be very careful with uh, uh, choosing the right vegetables to grow winter time and what I do now late summer early autumn is that I sow and plant as much as possible because I think the most difficult thing for me is not really to grow things to harvest winter time the most difficult thing is to grow enough of them that makes it worth the effort when the vegetables finally ends up at the dinner table now I have to use all the space that I have, both outside in the kitchen garden and inside my two polytunnels. Just fill up the area with like salad, rocket, radishes, uh, pak choy, you know, the, the, the cabbages, everything that could grow uh, and stand ready to harvest by middle of November. That is what I choose to, to grow. And after middle of November, when the daylight is so low, uh, it's not enough to grow anything, I can then harvest the things in my beds. And that is what I sort of aim for. And I just love this work. This is gardening to me. I know summer, it's, it's pretty much what, what people think about as the big garden season. For me, this is the season when it turns, it becomes a bit trickier. Uh, so I have to think a lot and um, be outside to live with my garden and that is what I just love so much about gardening. So check out my other videos at the channel. Uh, if you speak English, not understanding Swedish, you might get some inspiration from, uh, from the pictures anyhow. And later on there will be more videos for you in English. So subscribe my channel and check out later on. So. Um, at the end, I would like to say a great thank you to Monte Don for taking time to talk to me. And of course, a great thank you to uh, Sofia Ro, the Grand Garden Festival, for arranging this. And, I mean, bringing Monte Don to Sweden, that was just fantastic. Thank you. Have a nice day. I will now bring my melons to the kitchen, surprising my family. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>